Welcome to this new episode of my Linux driver tutorials. Last time we have created a minimal Hello World Linux kernel module and today we will improve the code a little bit and I will also show you some useful command line tools for managing Linux kernel modules and drivers. So let's start. As you can see here I am connected to my Raspberry Pi over SSH and I am in my Linux driver tutorials folder. In here, in this folder 01, I have the sources for our minimal Hello World Linux kernel module, which I will use as a base for today's video. So I will create a new folder I will call 2 Better Hello. And then let's navigate into this folder. In this folder, we have the kernel module source file hello.c, a make file to compile it, and a readme.md file which will give you some information about this kernel module. So let's open up the source file of the kernel module again and let's go over it how a simple Hello World kernel module looks like. So basically that's it. For a kernel module there are two important events. The first event is when the module is loaded into the kernel, the second one when the module is removed from the kernel. And for both events we have to implement callback functions. And that's what's done here. So we have a myInit function, which will be called when the module is loaded into the kernel. The return value is an integer, 0 if loading of the module was successful, an error code else. And with printk we write one line of code to the Linux kernel's lock. Then we're also implementing an exit function, which will be called or should be called when the module is removed from the kernel. It doesn't have any return values and in here we're just writing one line to the kernel's lock. With module init, module exit, we are specifying which functions should be used on the desired events. And with module license, we are specifying the license of our kernel module, which is necessary as some GNU Linux distributions only allows you to load free and open source kernel modules. And this here is already some piece of metadata but there is more metadata available for a kernel module. So let me copy this line and let's specify the module author and let's also give it a module description. So these two metadata fields are just what they sound like. So the author is the name of the author of the kernel module. And if you take a look at real drivers in the mainline Linux repositories, Normally you can even see the email addresses of the authors written into these braces here. But as I'm already getting enough spam, I will delete this and I won't check in my email address once again in my um, kernel module. And in the description we can specify a small module description. So this one will be a simple hello world Linux kernel module. Okay, so adding metadata is one way to improve this module, but we have more things to improve here. So next, let's declare these two fu functions static. And declaring the function static just limits their visibility and linkage. So from now on, these two functions are only available within this kernel module and you can't call these functions from outside. And one last thing I want to improve is for the readability. So between the return value and the name of the function I'm adding this under under init macro. And, and the same thing for here for the remove function. The only difference is I'm using the under under exit macro. And these macros does exactly nothing, but they increase the readability of the kernel module a little bit. The cool thing is, if you have a big, um, if you have a big kernel module or driver with some thousand lines of code, you just have to search for under under in it, and you can find the entry of the driver, or you search for under under exit, and you can find where the module is or what functions will be called when the module is removed from the driver which is pretty convenient. Okay, so much for the improvements. Let's try to compile it. So the compilation worked 
And now let's take a look how you can read out the metadata from your kernel module. Therefore, you can use the mod info command. And you have to pass in the name of the kernel module, which is hello.ko. And here we can see the description we gave, we can see the author, and we can also see the kernel version against which this module was compiled. And here we can also see the GPL. So mod info you can you can pass in the path and the file name of the desired module, like we did here, or you can also search for the module information of an already installed kernel module. For example, let's take the industrial IO kernel module. Industrial IO. So this module is built into the Linux kernel which is installed on my system and they, therefore it has this in tree flag here. So this means is this kernel module is shipped within the within my installed Linux kernel version. Here we can see the file name and the path to the file. So if I'm using mod info and I'm just specifying a name, it will automatically search in this folder here. And also once again, we can see a description and we can see an offer together with an email address. And we can see here the license is also the GPL. Okay, cool. So next thing we can do is we can insert our kernel module. Therefore, we're using the insert module or insmod command. And here, once again, we have to specify the path and file name to the um, yeah, to our kernel module. So the insertion worked. And now we can check if the module was loaded by using the lsmod command for listing all the kernel modules. So these are all the modules which are currently loaded on my system. And up here, we can see our Hello World Linux kernel module. As this is quite a lot, maybe it's easier to search for the module and we can do so by piping the output of lsmod into grep and then we will search for hello and we can see our kernel module in here. For showing the kernel's lock, we can use the dmessage command. But if we were run it just like this way, we will see the complete kernel lock. So here at the end we have the print of our Hello World Linux kernel module but here we can see the whole Linux kernel's lock from, from where the kernel was booted. <laughs> so yeah, this is quite a lot. And normally you're just interested in some lines. So what you can do is you can just pipe this to tail and then you only see the last 10 lines or maybe even the last line. Okay. And in order to follow the kernel's lock for new um, prints being done to the kernel's lock, you can use the, ah, I have to stop tmux first, sorry. <laughs> you can use the um, dmessage command with the minus w option. With a minor w, it will print out the whole kernel lock and wait for new output. With the capital W, it will only print out new incoming prints to the kernel's lock. So let's do this. And here, let's use remove module or the rm mod command to remove the module. And here we have two choices. The first one is we could specify um, the file name of our kernel module with the path, or we can write the module's name as it was shown with ls mod. So just our mod hello will also remove our hello world kernel module. And if we're executing this, we can see a new print in the kernel's lock telling us goodbye kernel. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is the mod, um, the mod probe command. So with mod probe, you can load a module together with all its dependencies. For example, let's load the industrial IO module here. And the cool thing is if you're using mod probe, then all the dependencies of this kernel module are also loaded automatically into the kernel. But the downside is in order to use mod probe, your kernel module must be in where we 
in yeah the slip modules folder and our self compiled kernel modules aren't so we can't use mob probe that's a little bit sad but hey never mind okay cool so i guess that's it for today i hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something in case you want to support my work you can buy me a coffee and buymeacoffee.com slash for linux so thanks for watching and goodbye